What's up guys? How's it going? Welcome back to my bake shop. I'm Dan Langan. Tonight, or today rather, it's all about cake for breakfast because I'm creating this gigantic fried egg out of nothing other than cake, of course, because that's what I do around here. So this giant fried egg starts with a big 14 inch layer of butter cake and a little six inch layer of butter cake. So this little six inch cake is going to become the yolk. So I actually dyed the uh, butter cake yellow before I baked it. So then when I cut through the whole thing, it's yellow like a yolk would be. So the first thing I have to do is carve down my yolk. So you can see here I just started with a six inch uh, round layer cake. And I already started rounding off the sides just to round it a little bit. I always spend a lot of time looking at the food I'm going to create um, before I uh, before I actually, you know, create it. Um, and I eat eggs every day. When I was younger, I always used to eat um, fried eggs. We call them dippy eggs, but I know most people probably call them sunny side up eggs. We're good. So guys, don't forget to leave your comments below. I'm curious to know your favorite way to eat an egg. Um, and I don't know if our questions are showing up, so if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer any of them, uh, whichever ones I can after this broadcast. But share this video with someone you think might enjoy it, and let us know below if there are any realistic food cakes you would like to see me create here live on the Food Network Facebook page. So what I'm doing right now is just frosting my uh, six inch cake with some yellow American buttercream. And then I'm gonna put some yellow fondant over it. And I'm using all yellow here, obviously, so that when I cut into it, it's yellow like a yolk. So my cake for this, or this uh, yolk cake here, is nice and cold. And I find that sometimes when I spread American buttercream over a cake that's been carved, all of the fresh crumb kind of makes it a little hard to spread the buttercream. So a good tip that I have is to microwave your buttercream just for about five or 10 seconds, depending on how much you have, just so that it's a little bit thinner because as soon as it hits the cold cake, it's gonna kind of, you know, stiffen up. So if you get it a little bit warm before you spread it on the cake, it'll be a little easier to spread. And another really cool thing about this cake is that since it's such a, I guess, short cake, since it's so rounded and organic, it's not really, you know, a cake with any sharp edges. Um, I can actually make this cake from start to finish without chilling it. So normally I'm all about chilling my cakes. If you guys have seen me work before, you know that. But this one I can kind of make from start to finish. So this is just a piece of plastic acetate. And it's great for kind of contouring buttercream cakes or ganache cakes, just like I'm doing right here, because you can bend it in your hands, kind of the shape of your cake. So I just want to frost this fairly smooth. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to set this aside, and I'm going to roll out a little bit of yellow fondant. So if you guys are just joining, this gigantic fried egg is actually a cake. It's a 14 inch cake with a six inch cake on top that's the big egg yolk. And I'm creating it live right now with the help of some vanilla butter cake, some buttercream, and of course some fondant. So I just frosted my yolk and now I'm kneading together some yellow fondant that I dyed with uh, some golden yellow gel paste and just a touch of orange because I want this yolk to be really, really rich in color. So just a little bit of cornstarch on my bench here. I'll flatten that out just a touch and I'll roll this in a nice circle. I always like to turn my fondant uh, as I'm rolling it just so it stays in a circle and also because it stays nice and even in thickness that way. So if you guys uh, have never checked out my Facebook page before, the link to my Facebook page, Baked by Dan, is at the top of this video. Make sure you check it out. And if you wanna see some of the recipes I use for my cake or buttercream or anything like that, head on over to my blog, which is bakingwithdan.com. And also check me out on Instagram because every week when I do these lives, I try and post uh, progress photos or like stories of what's going on so you can know before I go live, what I'm gonna create. Let me move my cornstarch here. So my cake should be nice and sticky because I just put the buttercream on it. So I'm just gonna lay this fondant right over top. Just use my hand to smooth the top down. I wanna try and keep this nice rounded yolk shape. So I'll just turn this as I smooth down. 
just use the round part of my hand. And right now this is pretty matte, but what I'm actually gonna do is paint this with some vegetable oil once the whole thing is together. And it's gonna give my fondant yolk that really nice glistening appearance that a freshly fried egg would have. So stay tuned because there are a lot of really cool techniques that I'm gonna to use to finish this cake off that are really gonna bring it to life. So another really uh, fun thing about this process is that normally when I'm rolling out fondant, I'm always working to get rid of any air bubbles that are in the fondant. Uh, but as I was making my example cake earlier, I realized that fried eggs are full of bubbles. So I really didn't even have to worry about popping all those bubbles. So this is just a wooden sculpting tool. I use it all the time for cakes. And since it's smaller than my finger, I can use it to kind of push the fondant all the way into the bottom corner of that cake. And then what I'm gonna do is grab a knife, grab a craft knife here, and then I'm just gonna cut the fondant away. Barely touching where that cake is. And then I'll just tuck a little bit of that under. And then I'm just gonna set this aside. So if you guys have any questions, don't forget you can post them below. I'll do my best to try and answer them after this broadcast. Um, if you're looking for awesome recipes that are going to turn out bakery style treats in your home kitchen, make sure you check out my blog, which is bakingwithdan.com. And if you guys are working on any cakes or you've attempted any sculpted cakes or sculpted food cakes, please share them in the comments below because one of my favorite parts about this whole gig here is getting to see what you guys create. So feel free to share away. Awesome. So that's nice and finished on the sides. What I want to do here really quickly just to round this out just a little bit further, is take some of my fondant, just an extra scrap piece here, knead it together until all the wrinkles go away. And I'm gonna use this to buff my yolk out. So I'll get a nice smooth side there and just really lightly. I'd imagine this is what it would be like to put makeup on, uh, but I don't really know. I don't know. If anyone's ever tried to use a piece of fondant to put makeup on, <laughs> That'd be really funny. You should uh, share about it. Have you ever tried that, Kate? You think that would work? No, it's a beauty blender. No, beauty blender. Maybe it would work. Maybe you could blend your beautiful makeup with a piece of fondant. All right, so see that just kind of buffs the whole thing out, makes it look nice and soft, gets rid of any like rough finger marks. Awesome. So this I'm just going to set aside, and I'm going to get to working on the white of my cake. Now, my cake is going to start with just white fondant, but as you'll see, in the cake that I've already completed, there's a lot of color and texture that goes into it. And that all comes from using a propane torch once the whole cake is put together. So what I have here, I'm gonna work on a piece of parchment so it's easy to clean up. I have a 14 inch cake, it's about an inch thick. I have it on a 12 inch board. So I have a little bit of overhang so that when I shape my cake, uh, you won't see the board. The board won't ever be exposed. So the first thing I want to do is just kind of cut two sides in this way, just to make it kind of a, an uneven circle so it's a little more organic looking or, you know, like natural, as a fried egg would be. And then basically I just want to taper in all of the sides. So I'm just going to turn this as I work here. So this cake itself actually started with three pounds of uh, my vanilla buttermilk cake, which I call my confetti cake on my blog because I usually like to put rainbow sprinkles in it. Um, but if you just want a nice solid buttermilk cake, you can forego the sprinkles and you'll have a really great butter based cake that carves well and uh, stacks well also. So just in the interest of keeping my space clean, I'm trying to keep all these crumbs on this parchment. And then I'll just frost this with some buttercream. And I know from earlier that without doing a crumb coat, this is gonna look a little rough. Um, but like I said, fried egg, totally organic, bumpy, all kinds of ripply and, you know, uh, rough looking from, from being fried. Um, so by no means am I too worried about this being, you know, really smooth like I normally would be when I'm putting fondant on the cake. Which is really cool because it makes this process a whole lot quicker. So 
So I know that eggs are one of my favorite breakfast foods and they've been ever since I was younger. We called fried eggs dippy eggs when I was a little kid. Uh, if you guys have a favorite way to eat an egg or you have a cool idea for an egg cake, let us know in the comments below because I'd be curious to see. What's your favorite way to eat an egg, Kate? Dippy eggs. Dippy eggs? Yeah. I don't know if anyone else calls them dippy eggs. I think it might be a Philly thing. I don't yeah, know. Maybe it's a Philly thing. thing so you can call it sunny side up, you can call it a fried egg. Uh, in Philly, we call it a dippy egg. Which actually sounds really funny the more I say it. <laughs> so now that this is nice and tapered in, I'm gonna leave the top fairly flat because that's where I'll attach the yolk. And whenever I'm carving a cake, I like to do it in really short motions. I just take off one section at a time. You can always take off more, but if I did accidentally take a big dent out of my cake, it wouldn't be a big deal because I would just backfill it with buttercream. So frosting a cake is, it's more like being a, I don't know, like a cement worker, like a, a sculptor, a sculptor a, <laughs> well, I mean, you know, when you're, when you're frosting a cake, it's almost like you're, I don't know, working with like bricks yeah, and cement or something. Worker. I'm a, I'm a cake artist, come on. All right, so this looks pretty organic. It will uh, take even more shape once, once the fondant is on there. So let me just clean up my space a little bit. If you guys are just joining, this gigantic fried egg cake, it's 14 inches across. It's made with three pounds of cake, and I'm creating it right now out of cake, buttercream, and fondant. So don't go anywhere because this is gonna come together in just the next few minutes. So I'm gonna move my cake up onto my turntable. Let's get rid of this part from here that has all these crumbs on it. Don't forget if you guys have any questions about baking, about you know sculpting cakes or whatever, just uh, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer once this broadcast is over. You can also feel free to hit me up on my Facebook page at Baked by Dan. Check me out uh, on Facebook at Baked by Dan. Check me out on Instagram. All right, so let's give this a frost. So I have some buttercream here and a piping bag. It's just an easy way to kind of distribute this. And I just need a thin layer here. It doesn't have to be really thick. With all these crumbs, I like to try and keep the spatula going in one motion and just keep the spatula on the buttercream because if the bare spatula touches the cake, or I pull the spatula up too quickly, it's just gonna kind of rip those crumbs away, which is no big deal because all of this will be covered once the cake is, uh, you know, covered in the white fondant. So I think my favorite part of putting this cake together is getting to torch the edges with the propane torch. Anytime I can bring out my propane torch and fire that up when I'm working on a cake, it's always, it's always extra fun because it's a chance to be a little, uh, a little dangerous and live on the edge a little bit. You don't get to live on the edge too much when you're making cakes, but when you're torching a cake, that might be as crazy as it gets. So I'll frost this all the way to the edges. I'm going to tuck the fondant under the edges of this cake, so I'm not too concerned with getting the buttercream all the way to the very edges because the, butter or the fondant's going to stick to the cake anyway. Move this all out. Awesome. So I'll take a little bowl scraper here and just smooth this just a tiny bit. It doesn't have to be perfect again, like I said, but I don't want any huge lines in my buttercream. So this is just a big bowl scraper. It's just gonna get rid of any really rough lines there. Good. So I'll set this aside and now what I have to do is grab a sheet pan. I'm gonna put this whole cake together this giant egg cake, I'll put it together on a sheet pan because when you're making an egg this big, you need a big platter to put it on. And the biggest thing I have is this sheet pan. So I have a clean sheet pan turned upside down. And since it's metal, this is also going to allow me to torch the edges of the egg without uh, setting anything on fire. <laughs> so now I just have to roll out some white fondant. So before I do that, I wanna clean up any final crumbs before I get my white fondant out. All right, grab my white. 
right? Final step before I put my white fondant on is to actually add my yolk before I add the white fondant. What that's gonna do is cover the bottom edge of the yolk. The white will, the uh, fondant that's the egg white of the cake will actually cover the bottom seam of the yolk. So the yolk and the white will look more like they're one piece as opposed to just being stuck on top of one another. So now I've got my white fondant. Get a little bit of shortening in my hands. So it's nice and easy to knead, and I'll give it a good knead until it's nice and stretchy. So once this is nice and stretchy, I'm gonna roll it out, and I'll drape it all over the cake, and I'm just going to cut away the portion that's covering the yolk, and smooth the entire thing together. So I'm going to bring all of these wrinkles to the bottom just so I have a nice smooth top. And I'll roll this out. A little bit of cornstarch on my bench. If you guys are just joining here, my name is Dan Langan. I'm from Baked by Dan. I love making gigantic realistic food cakes. It's one of my favorite things to put together. And tonight I'm making this huge fried egg. Because eggs are my favorite breakfast food and I thought it would be really fun to turn a fried egg into a cake. So I see a few air bubbles. Normally I'd be really dead set on popping them, but I'm not worried about it because the white of a fried egg always has air bubbles in it. So it'll just add to the look of the whole thing. I do want to try and keep this in a fairly even circle, just so I know that it covers my whole cake. So I'll keep turning it as I roll it. Two more rolls and I should be good to go. So normally, I'm always working with chilled cakes uh, because chilled cakes are a lot easier to sculpt and cover with fondant. Um, but I'm just gonna cover this straight away. I obviously haven't chilled the buttercream, but since it's such a rounded design and it's really organic to begin with, it really doesn't need to be chilled. So I'm just gonna roll this up. Move my cake to the center of my table. I'll unroll this fondant on top of the whole thing. First thing I'm gonna do is just smooth down around that yolk. Because in just a moment, I'm gonna basically just cut away the fondant right where the yolk is touching the white. And I'll just peel this extra away and that yolk will be revealed there. So by putting the white over the yolk and then peeling it off, it makes the egg look a little more seamless, like they're actually uh, one piece instead of, you know, just like the yolk looking like I just plopped it on top of the white. So around the edges here, what I wanna do is just kind of flatten this down just so it looks a little more pointed towards the ends. Good. All right, so I'm gonna grab my craft knife again Grab my, grab a sculpting tool, and I'm just gonna trace around the yolk, just to give myself a line of where I need to cut. So I wanna try and do this right up against the edge of the yolk, and if there's any space, like if any cake shows through, totally no big deal. I'll just push the white fondant into, into the yolk and it'll just look like one seamless thing. So now really carefully, I wanna peel this up. Good. So I'll just push these two pieces together, put my white away here. All right, and so on this edge here, what I'm gonna do is cut about a quarter of an inch away from the side of the cake, because I wanna thin this edge a little bit and texture it so it looks 
nice and rough, and that's the part that I'm gonna hit with my propane torch. Um, it's really brown and make it look like it's actually, you know, fresh out of the frying pan. So I'll peel this away. Take a little bit of my white, use it to push that fondant towards the yolk. And if any buttercream peeks out, I'm just going to brush it away with a pastry brush. Awesome. All right, so now it's really just on to the texturing and the coloring, and that's what absolutely brings this cake to life. So this is my favorite part. I'm gonna move this up on top of my turntable. All right, I'm gonna grab a pastry brush, get rid of any buttercream or little cake crumbs that have kind of poked through the whole thing. And I'm gonna take two texturing tools, and the first thing I'm gonna do is just smooth out this cut edge so that it looks a little softer and a little less pointy. So I'll just smooth this whole thing down. I want the white to look thin, but I still want it to be a good bit of cake. Uh, so this cake, believe it or not, uh, like I said, it's about three pounds of cake. So it really would serve at least about 10 people. Um, you got a good inch of cake here. So what I'm gonna do is just start kind of roughing the edges up a little bit, adding some little textured holes, making this look like, you know, I just dropped this egg into a skillet of hot oil that white started to cook up right away. So just some holes in some spots that the propane torch is really going to accentuate. Maybe some larger ones in other spots. Kind of break it. This is one of the best parts of making food cakes is when you get to really kind of be creative and random and texture things and add color and add, uh, you know, dimension with your, with your texture and airbrushing and dusting. Um, it makes the whole process really fun. So now I'll just add some air bubbles or little, little pricks around where the, uh, where the white and the yolk would be together. If I want to add some more texture, I can just use my fingers. Right. So once this cake is finished, I'm going to hit it with some pepper because I always eat my fried eggs with freshly, freshly cracked black pepper. It's like one of my favorite things. Um, and crushed up black sprinkles actually work really well for that. At first I thought about using black sugar, but the crushed up black sprinkles really look like fresh cracked pepper because you get uh, a really irregular shape and size with all of them. So it's all about those sprinkles. You can do a lot with them. All right, so if any parts look like too rounded and don't look flat enough, I'll just kind of push them out just a little bit more. Push some areas in just so it's not a perfect circle. Awesome, all right, so let's get the propane torch here. All right, so I'm gonna start this and then I'm gonna paint the cake so it's a little shiny, and then I'll hit it with just a little more color. So I'm just gonna keep my propane torch moving as I aim the flame right towards the side of the cake. I'll let some areas get a little bit darker. So this is just a little creme brulee torch. I just bought it from the kitchen store. And all it's really doing is caramelizing the sugar. We're burning all the sugar in the fondant, basically. Take this all the way around the edges. And then I'm actually gonna use some watered down piping gel to paint over the yolk to give it kind of like a semi-gloss finish. And then to give the yolk a really high gloss finish, I'm gonna use some vegetable cooking spray, vegetable oil cooking spray. If I 
want some little spots maybe where that oil jumped up and hit the egg. I'll just hit a few spots on top. Not too dark though, just a little bit. All right, so now I'm gonna grab some piping gel. It's thinned down with just a little bit of water just so it's a little bit easier to paint on my white. And I'll just paint this whole thing on here. And it's just really gonna bring the white to life just so it looks nice and freshly cooked and ready to eat. I'll paint it all the way up to the yolk. If some of it gets on the yolk though, totally no big deal, it doesn't matter. So I'll make sure I have a nice even covering. So I'll just spin my cake as I bring the brush up the side of the cake. All right, so I'm gonna grab some cooking spray. And I'm just gonna spray the cooking spray directly on top of the yolk. And then I'll use another pastry brush just to kind of paint the whole thing to make it look nice and smooth. So, just spraying this vegetable cooking spray right on top of the yolk. And I'll just paint across the whole thing. And then after a second or two, any bubbles or brush marks will go away and look like a nice, freshly cooked egg yolk. Now I think this needs a bit more color so I'm just going to torch the side of this just a little bit more. I like when my fried egg has a lot of color on the edges because I think it has a really nice toasted nutty flavor. So let's get some good color here. So whenever you're torching fondant, um, you always want to keep the torch moving because it'll look like it's not doing anything and then all of a sudden it's going to bubble and color is going to show up. So this is easier to do in coats if you're looking for a really deep color instead of trying to do it really dark all in one shot. And it's going to smoke a little bit too because you're burning the sugar in the fondant, but that's no big deal. It actually smells like to toasted marshmallows. So. I'm not complaining. All right, a little bit more right here and then I'm gonna hit this with some black pepper. I can't eat a fried egg without some freshly cracked pepper on top. So I have some black sprinkles here that I've just kind of crushed up and I'll crush them up just a little bit more as I sprinkle them on top of the egg. And I think it looks like freshly cracked pepper. Right across the center. There we go. So I'm ready to eat. It's not even breakfast time, but right now I have a cake for breakfast. This is my gigantic fried egg. If you guys just joined and you didn't get to see how I created the whole thing, uh, no worries, it's cool. Just make sure you subscribe to my Facebook page or like my Facebook page, Bake My Dad on Facebook, because you'll be able to see this video after this live is over. If you guys have any questions, don't forget, you can hit me up on Instagram, Facebook, at Baked by Dan. Uh, and if you have a cool idea for a cake you'd like to see, like something else like this, let me know because I'll be back next week. Everybody have a great week. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.